Welcome to Oxygen Not Included, DLC called Spaced Out. My name is Neil Aus, and this is a short tutorial series on how to get you started with the new Spaced Out DLC. So everything you know about the, the early game, or basically everything you know about the game, is kind of turned upside down and things are very different in the new DLC. So it's not necessarily easy to come up with solutions, but it's kind of one of the cool things about it. So I've uh, spent a bit of a... Uh, of time just figuring things out and I want to share it with you in these short tutorials these will be focused on the let's say the four main aspects water power food and oxygen you can also say temperature is also one of the key aspects but temperature is super easy to manage in the new world so there's no point in us actually getting there speaking of the new world let's have a look at what it is this is a swampy world so you can see there are different plants different critters more different critters more different plants and it's full of swampiness so that's really weird that's why we are going to take a look at this one this is all recorded in early access so if you, something changed or so things are subject to change of course if you like the idea of these kind of tutorials then hit the like button and uh, let me know in the comment section below if there are other topics that you'd like to see tutorials for for the new dlc here we are we are in the in a new world this is a good place to just get a sense of our surroundings if we go to screenshot mode we can zoom out a bit that's uh, alt s you lose the overlay but you can zoom out a bit since this is uh, dealing with the water i think that's the one we want to look at yes you can see here a bit of polluted lots of polluted lots of polluted lots of polluted polluted polluted, 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 polluted. everywhere is polluted oxygen or polluted water and there's very little real clean water so the first thing you absolutely have to take care of <clears throat> which is not necessarily a, an easy thing for me is you got to take care of your polluted water no you got to take care of your normal water don't mix it up with normal this one is clean no food poisoning in it anywhere actually no food poisoning in any of it at this point so but do take care of it and don't try to make sure that it doesn't mix like it is here and uh Try to manage that. That's going to be your main point about managing your water. And uh, But the thing is, you might look at this and go, wow, this is going to be difficult. However, in this uh, playthrough or in this tutorial, I'll show you how to just generate an absolute ton of water quite easily from the surroundings you have. But we're going to need a bit of a base just to get it started. So I am going to jump a bit forward, 35 cycles into the future. And then uh, I'll show you a base and then go through how I'm getting my water in here. So here we have our my base, 37 cycles in. And what you can see is that we actually have uh, quite a bit of polluted water. I've been collecting the polluted water. I've made a nice big stockpile of it. But our main problem here is the fact that we are actually running out of the normal clean water. And that's what we really want to do. So we have this thing called a new building it's it's called a sludge press and we really want to put it in here just to show you what it can do and we'll just do that one and speed things up and then hopefully someone will come over here and build the sludge press for us yeah come on in get on with it so the sludge press is a new machine that's being added what it does is it takes polluted let's have a look at it Pol mud to dirt and water or polluted mud to polluted dirt and polluted water so it basically takes something you have in vast quantities and you can just do this one now we just want to set it up i'll give it a bit higher priority so something happens in the meantime we can go over here and take a look at our mud reservoirs here 63 tons of polluted 54 tons of mud the way it works is that in the here if it gets delivered 50 150 tons 150 kilos and i think it just completed so let's have a look here one two three four five six seven eight nine bubbles it gives the 500 and you will also be able to see here uh, okay that's actually just not necessarily correct because it completed twice so 150 kilos of mud becomes 60 kilos of dirt which you use for your plants plus 90 kilos of water and there are no germs in this water so with this one yes it does require some dupe operation but um, hey that looks so cool cute when they do that and uh, yeah so this is how you will generally produce an absolute ton of water and polluted mud and polluted mud and polluted mud doesn't really have a use anywhere for anything 
So getting that as uh, converted into water is super efficient and also converted into dirt because dirt is also what you're going to need for keeping your farms alive. So this will take care of a lot of your of your water needs for the early game because having a due preparation and then get 90 kilos of water definitely going to be satisfactory. This one was at 200 when we started and just by me chatting away we were up to 600 kilos and when that one's completing we'll see here that it'll just to go up more as well. So definitely this is a great way to top off your water supply. You won't be needing anything else as long as you have this one. Uh, what you can do is you can also let this one be down here so that it will automatically only fill up to a certain limit because when this one is underwater it doesn't pressure or doesn't output that means it'll backlog backlog on the pipes and then will, this will naturally get stuck and cannot operate because the output pipe is blocked that's a cheaper way to do automation by just submerging the output vent the liquid vent so that's one cool way to do this uh, very easy you can also do it for polluted water Polluted water, you can say, is you should have a lot of polluted water. And when you really start needing a tons and tons of polluted water, then this is probably not the best way to do it. But there are other ways and actually more sustainable ways that also do not require some dupe operation. And uh, let's take a look at those. Here we are a bit later in the game. And what we are seeing is another way of generating water is from the cool salt slush geyser. And uh, that will just generate a lot of brine. And it's a very nice cold brine as well. And that can be just pumped in. What I'm doing here, and that's also what I would recommend, is using this for cooling. It pumps out at minus five. And then I use it for just cooling some batteries. And then coming in here to a desalinator where it becomes turned into normal water. The desalinator is quite power intensive, 480 watts. So you can see here, I am actually having a bit of power issues with the solar panels not being able to quite keep up. But this one is producing, it's producing here. I'm putting this underwater so it doesn't fill up more than two tiles and it'll basically just top up this one to have always have two tiles. It's nice clean water. It outputs at a temperature of 40 degrees. So you wanna put it in as close to 40 degrees as possible by just using it as a cooling loop. That's at least how I would recommend what um, and then you go like, yeah, but what if I don't have one? And I can say you will have one. On every single map of this kind, in the starting thing, you will have a cool slush geyser as well as a, what is it called? It's called a, yeah, cool slush geyser and a cool salt slush geyser. So you will have that. I've generated a number of different maps. There are always one of each of these and it's pretty damn nice. This one though is uh, stuck, I guess. I don't know if it's actually outputting when it's below but that's uh, really nice and that gives you some kind of sustainability when it comes to water, meaning that water is actually not really going to be a problem despite the fact that you start with having so little clean water and also having your farms up here being consuming a ton of water, lots and lots of water. These bug buckets consume 40 polluted water per cycle. So you really want to make sure that you have a steady supply of water and you do have that with a cool slush geyser and a cool salt slush geyser. On the map so i would recommend doing that and uh, just uh, using those for feeding the base and that will keep you happy and going all the way until you need to go to other other bases so that basically is very very short on how you manage your water the fact that you you start out by not having much and that can be a bit stressful but uh, the sludge sludge press is a super good way to top up but at the cost of some dupe energy or dupe activity and if you want to take that out then i would recommend desalinator i'd rather use the desalinator than i would use the water sieve the water sieve converting the polluted water to normal water because the polluted water is useful in and of itself while brine is not particularly useful so uh, therefore this is why i've chosen this path and the polluted oxygen or polluted water geyser can then be used for all sorts of other cool things and that should basically get you sorted with all the water you need uh, both in a starter way and in a sustainable way once you move a bit further into the game. I hope you found this to be useful for your water needs in your own getting started with Spaced Out DLC. If you have, then hit the like button and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching and as always, stay effective.